Okay, let me check here. So you write minus 41. Wait a minute, you got different frame counters here. So wait, 41, 209. All right, up until the jump. That's the dragon. All right. Cool. Oh, I like it. I can. I think you just pump it up. I think it's good. I look at this here. Okay. What you gotta do here is that your wing tips. I'm assuming dragons are on here. Uh, at this point, your wings would be like this. Curved. Basically, um, they would be like this at the top, right? So you want. Oh, horrible thing. You must be shaking your head. Wait, this is what I'm paying this guy for. So you have like this. And then as it goes down, right, the tips are always up. And then you can do that until the very end. And then what happens is that when it goes uh, into the reversal, you want this. So you want that section here to go down. And then as that section, where actually this is, this is kind of wrong, uh, look at it this way. So the angle will be in here. So as this section here goes up, this reverses, right? So this section goes from there here to reverse. But then, as the wing goes up, we're still kind of here. So you got that, and then oh, I guess we can't draw. It's ridiculous. The tip are down. The tips are down. But then what happens is that as you start folding, this happens. So basically, you have your 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 dragon um, points here of the wings. What happens is that when you have your full wing, like that's your full wing you will break it at the elbow point wherever that is on your rig and then you have maybe this section of the tip that folds um that's always dragging so you have elbow and then you got more of a break and then you got the tips that are bent if that makes sense the tips on the way down are always dragging and then they're they reverse and then they're always dragging and the wing themselves they break they break and then they get to kind of this point. And again, the tips are always down. And then as the uh, the wings go back down, you get the reverse again where the tip was that. I hope any of this makes sense. So by the time you're here, and I'm again assuming the body's here, you can totally go higher with your flaps. Just to make them a bit more powerful. Again, tips will be down. And then as you go here, so from here to here, like that looks good, except that it would be a bit more, right? So this would be that, boom, and that would be that, yeah. But you can probably take the whole things and go more up and down. So you do have a break, which is good, but that break, you know, more like that and tips fully down definitely not this you don't want to go up and be in upwards position so again it's that at this point you know that might be here but you you break them pretty uh for a pretty long time and what happens too is that in your spacing um if they go down right on that part let's pretend whatever it is um that will be whatever 20 frames right and then, so that goes down. And then as they go up, that will be, let's say, whatever, 14 frames. Because as they go down, the wings are flat and extend and everything. So the um, wing resistance is bigger because of the surface. So it's going to be slow. And because the wings break on the way up, is less resistant so they're faster so down slow up fast so make sure that's really pronounced as well so if you add the wingtip folds the bigger break right timing and all that and the bigger distance like even through here again this could be you know a bit more pronounced and that 
down here as well. And then you have your, you know, the, the dragon path that has, every, every time the dragon flaps has a little bit of, a bit of a up overall. It just gives it a bit more energy, just for fine tuning. And then also when this feels more like, so imagine that from the side, you know, that that's your dragon. But it can be a moment as, as the dragon is not flapping, you can have a moment of this going on. And then... Of that going on. Meaning that you compress and squash. You bring that up. And then you go down and extend and open the mouth. And that's your stretch. And you get into kind of a your re, uh, reverse C curve, right? So you're going into into that and then so it's not just opening the jaw so you have a little bit of a flap flap and then and of course on the way up and then down it was it wouldn't just be in a, in a one axis type of thing but your head from the front would also be potentially going into a curve like that like sideways tilt your head to the side a bit as you imagine you are moving your head back and a bit to the side and then you have a bit of a Y rotation as well and then it's almost like if you track the nose the nose goes whew, something like that goes back and then there's a little arc like if I track my own nose I feel like I'm going down backwards and then up something like that like that would be for the war there's details on that and then if you're going this way watch out you can still, the tricky thing is you're doing the right thing by following the path. You can experiment with keeping the head locked a bit more towards the creature. So wait, so if he does this, right, you can do a big, see how the, the head is aligned like this or it's like that. You can then go like this, like a big turn this way. So the head is really going in a swoop down to the side, leading really that turn. And by the time you're here, you can make a bigger deal out of the head turning and just following the creature. The way you do it here, just maybe maybe a bit earlier. Here. Yeah, it's a bit earlier. Because now it seems like the dragon stops the move and the head turn is kind of at the same time. So it's kind of going to lead with the head a bit more. And especially this and that will help you too with the bigger flaps that then the body does a little bit of a woo. Oh. Not that he has to go super low, but you want it to less you want it to be less glidy. Like this seems to be the path where it just kind of goes around and that that's all like correct layout wise and everything. But then you want to add some oomph where uh you know it might fly flap and then have a little hang time down and then back up into it into this basically what i'm trying to do also spacing wise is not have the dragon fly in an in this type of spacing you want the dragon to go go like that and then maybe up i don't see my cursor so i can't even do the proper spacing so it'll be like that and then oh like that and then you got your jumping guy and then it will be the same thing where it's it's smaller 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 and then it's boom explosion meaning I go back here that the spacing when they hit each other they both have this kind of spacing so that they accelerate that's my whole point is that they both accelerate and get phew. imagine there's like a wind up and phew, and then it gets so fast and then you got that hit point which will make that impact so much stronger if you do that all right uh those are from 150 50 to 215 until the end huh? 250 so after the impact here yeah kind of um, what happens now is that's cool. All right. See, so what happens here is that 
boom, on that, he kind of stays still. And there's still a lot of forward momentum going coming towards us. So what I would do is he can... It feels like he's on his feet too quickly. On feet. You know? To me, it feels like it would be... Here. On like 160. It would be... Paw, oh, paw here. Extended. Head. Another hand here. Body. Maybe like another foot here. A bit more spread out. And I only by six one sixty will be hitting that pose. Um, oh, actually, I take it back. You could also experiment with close grip here on one sixty, and then what I would need to do is to give us that impression of momentum, and there's four momentum, and he's trying to work against it, or she, whatever that dozer is. See if I time it out with sound. It's almost like until now, maybe you can futz it a bit, make it 15, but it's more like by now. Like if you hit 160 is the hitting pose. By now, he might be or she might be a bit closer to us, but then you would have that pose so that you get um, narrow and then wide. Meaning that he or she rolls, hits the ground, and then the point is that um, the creature slides towards us, right? So it hits the pose, has still forward momentum, puts the feet down, slides, and through that slide, uh, the creature expands and widens the the stance, you know, to get to get to kind of push against that slide. If that makes sense. It's like someone's running. And it has, you know, the, the legs like this. And then towards the ends, so they will be lower. And they have a really wide stance. Because if he's sliding this way, the foot gets racked this way. And he pushes his leg out that way. So it, it widens the stance. I hope that makes sense. But that way you get also a different pose change in uh, that character. From narrow to wide. That's visually more interesting. Again, slides a bit towards us. And I think that will make a more powerful statement, give us more weight and everything, as opposed to this very quick stop here and then just kind of hoppy hop back with, you know, the ling, the limbs. I know this is your pass here. It's not offset yet, but it's the impression right now, it feels very timid. It's kind of like a little too clean of a hop. And then that makes it like, especially the head bowing down and little steps makes, okay, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hi. In the mouth shape also looks like he's smiling. This seems very timid. Don't look down. Always look at the creature because the creature, those are one. So now it has to always look at the guy and go, ah, fuck you, I told you. That type of thing. And then through that slide, at the very end, you can still then have that. Um, you know, the creature might be here at the end with all the sliding. Uh, and then you can always do the roar. And then what will happen is that he will be doing this. You know, the wing will be down and the creature will be here. So then you can have him move forward. So he roars and not just opening the mouth, but leaning towards the creature again, invading its space and going, fuck you, I, I, I won. And here I'm yelling your face. All right. Hope that makes sense. Uh, if not, as always, feel free uh, to email me. Thank you. All right. There's an email. You can sign up. You can start whenever you want. You can submit whenever you want. You get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right. Thank you.